Ray Rickman, Democrat running for Senate District 3. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And so tell me what's the biggest issue facing the district and how you would address it if you're elected. Education. The Providence Public Schools have collapsed and not a single person will dispute that. Not the Commissioner of Higher Ed, Ed for Rhode Island, certainly not the Superintendent of Schools. Governor Raimondo took the school district and gave it to the state. And since that time, two years ago, it has gotten worse, which I knew it would because you don't take your children, you know, you, you got to give your children away for a while, give them to your sister who loves them and has a nice house and buys them bikes. Don't give them to the sister who doesn't like them and never bought them a bike. And that's what she did. And it doesn't work. She probably should have got a master, you know, hired somebody, former superintendent of the best school district in America, Ann Arbor, Michigan, or Somerville, Mass, and have that person come and see what they could do. But, so um, I'm going to go be part of the state, hopefully, get elected to the Senate. And as part of the state, since the state has the school district, I hope to have a lot of clout to begin to go this way, up. Do you think that the state should give the schools back to the city? It doesn't matter. But Why not? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Just, they ju just what I told you. They, um, you're almost always better in a bad home <laughs> than you are in a uh, shelter. That's how I see this. Uh, she took them from the bad house and put them in a shelter. Nothing has improved. Um, every single problem the public school has can be fixed, and I use violence as an example. Charter schools, parochial schools, and no private schools have any violence. Why do we have to have violence, even at classical high school? And it's because we don't have any rules, we don't enforce the rules, and when something bad happens, we say, did he break his arm? No. Oh, oh, I'm busy. So you go up, and you're, if you're elected to the Senate, what changes will you be able to make to this situation? How do we improve the school? So when I was in the House of Reps, uh, Paul Crowley from Newport was Mr. Education, and you couldn't do anything. Paul Crowley He's, of the Crowley Act that we correct. talk about so often. Yes, now. and a speaker would send you to him, and he'd give you the blessing or or not, and he also knew things. You should see what I have collected in the last six months in terms of every piece of legislation, every act, every ruling on the schools. When I get there in January, I'm going to be the most knowledgeable person in the Senate. Not because I'm brighter and more capable than the rest of the senators, because I'm studying. And I'm going to go in with an anti-violence piece of legislation. That's my first piece of legislation. It's simple, it's easy, it's clean. And they're going to pass it. And hopefully by February. And then I have nine or ten more. It's only a 14-month uh, job because Gail quit. and. I'm asking people to elect me for the 23,000 school children, but because I'm going to be laser focused on education. And 90% of what I do is that. The other 10% I will vote on anything that comes on the floor. But I'm not going to be worried about marijuana. I'm not going to, whatever the hot button issue is, whatever you're handling in the media, if it's not education, I'm not going to take an interest. Um, now, don't misunderstand me. I'm a kind of crazy environmentalist. I've planted thousands of trees. I've done all kinds of things. And that stuff's going to weigh on me, but it's going to be secondary at all times. I, I served on the, on the parole board, and can I tell you, they are committing crimes against those children. And I saw those teenagers, and I won't name the high schools. We have, you know which ones they are. And they come before the parole board and they quit school in the eighth grade. And you just go like that. How do we let that happen? And so one of my questions was, tell me about one bill you'll introduce when you join the Senate. You mentioned it'll be something to address violence. What would, what so, would the so, legislation um, be? That's the reason I'm running. I kept trying to get a particular principal, I decided it'd be nice and not name him anymore, to deal with violence. And he couldn't because he says, they didn't break, they, they didn't hit anybody. And so these two um, <coughs> kids, were threatening this other kid all the time. And they were just having fun, but he was afraid, he was six feet one, 
and weighed about 100 pounds and frail and frightened. They terrorized him. And what you need, as they have uh, every place else, you can't frown at a kid at Moses Brown. You frown at somebody, you get called in. You hit them, you get sent out. And we don't do that in, in the public schools. So what's the bill? What's the legislation? Oh, the bill has tells protocol what you do. These ten, you, I'm telling you, a principal won't do anything unless you break someone's arm. They need to pre-intervene. So the, would it be consequences for the students? For the, no, for the principal. Okay. And the student, the student be kicked out. You and and never mind. If you break someone's nose, you're kicked out. There's no discussion. You shouldn't be frightened to go to school. And the perpetrator knows it's wrong. Okay. <laughs> well, and so you don't get all these chances to terrorize the school. Can we take that to sort of its its the next steps? Because we talk often about the school to prison pipeline mm. and students who are suspended or expelled. Um, then what? Where do they go to school? Oh no, they go down the street. I mean, first, I'm, I'm talking about what the offense is. Mm -hmm. if, if it's a minor offense, they just get transferred. And nobody wants to be transferred. You don't want to go to that other high school. I can tell you, you know, we could pick on uh, Cranston East and West. You don't want to go to the other one. And um, so you get transferred after you do an act of violence. But when you are beginning, because what uh, teenagers often do, and I've worked with thousands of kids, I know what I'm talking about. They threaten you. I'm going to beat you up on Friday. They tell you that on Wednesday. <laughs> and then they go get their two friends and they're outside. Even if they don't beat you up, you're shaking. So when, that's like step five in my protocol. And you would be sent home a week on that and your mother would be in school. But uh, if we can't, after you're sent to a, another school, if you continue to do this, uh, you'll have to go to a uh, personal school. <laughs> and that is, um, you, they do it in New York where they have kids who have, uh, you know, 10 kids in the classroom and they don't have a gym and they don't have basketball and they don't have any of that. Can, can I tell you, uh, in all the schools that I talked about, par parochial, private, yeah. charter, you don't even get there because they know you will go there. So that's the first bill that you would introduce. Yes. Um, so I've got a hypothetical for you. Well, so first of all, if you win the election, would you um, run for re-election next year in the regular election? I'm going to say yes okay. because I have two to three years of work to do. I have ten things I want to do in the public schools, and I also told you I want to be the new Paul Crowley, and I'm not sure you get there in 14 months. So if you were to win and, and then win in the regular election next year, um, and if the Senate president wins his re-election next year, uh, would you, do you support him as Senate president? Would you vote for him? Um, you don't know this because you weren't here. Uh, Rodney Driver and Ray Rickman were the reformers in the legislature. When we went there, the budget this big was given to you at 1 o'clock and you voted at 2. You couldn't even read the preamble. And when we left, you had nine days. So we did that. We beat up the speaker, a lot of help from Republicans. I mean, it was a wild coalition. And we got uh, from, from little stuff, no smoking on the House floor, okay, to big stuff. And um, I did that. I really did. Ask anybody, come and cause, name me legislator of the year three years in a row, and national stopped them from naming me the fourth year. Okay, they said, Jill, give it to someone else. So I know how to do reform. I'm not doing any. I'm going for education. You mess with the president of the Senate, you better take the president of the Senate out. So yes, you support you Senate don't, President Ruggiero. No, I didn't tell you that. I okay. said, see, I, I don't buy all this stuff. First, you can't imagine how many reforms have come in the last 22 years that we don't see. And th this reminds me of being black in America. You know, when I was a kid, you had a racial incident every 12 minutes. Now you have one every 12 days. Well, that's too many. But can I tell you the world has improved and the legislature has improved. 
and I can function under the president of that body. How do you think Governor McKee is doing so far since he took over? Now, a month ago, when first asked, I said, eh, it was too early, you know, to judge. And I am like that. I give everybody a year before I praise or whatever. Now, uh, most people are the opposite. You get a new school superintendent, and he's handsome. Two superintendents ago, and all these people going around, oh, I like him. I said, what do you like? You've seen no change. So I'm not one to judge quickly. But when I do judge, it's not on personality. I'm only interested in performance. That's all I'm interested in. So I don't want to uh, critique the governor yet. Uh, being lieutenant governor is one little thing, <laughs> and being governor is another. It takes you six months to get your staff together. So I think we should give him the benefit of the doubt, and maybe and that's as far as I'm going to go. If you're elected to the Senate, there is a very large amount of money from the American Rescue Plan that is sitting there waiting to be spent. How are you going to spend it? Do you see the uh, excitement? This is the most money unallocated, undirected in the history of Rhode Island. And we ought to do powerfully interesting things with it. I I'm serious. There are so many problems, but there are so many opportunities. So I actually told the governor, I'd like to see half of it, you know, go help uh, behavioral uh, disabilities community, and then take the other half and let's look at some things, seriously. And all we have to do, look, look at what eight other states are doing that we aren't doing. I'll give you one quick example. There is no money, and you know, this is what I do for life. There's no money to teach children how to swim it, it, on any level. Oh, can we give the health department some money? Now, if we gave them real money, we could fix this problem because we could teach everybody how to swim, and then mm -hmm. instead of 80% of black kids not knowing how to swim, we'd be down to 20%, and that's a manageable problem. But we need to build a structure that's in place. We have no structure. Uh, you don't know this, except you know all kinds of things. Providence has no library. That's a private library. Did you know that? Providence has no museum. The museum belongs to the RISD. Providence has no health department. Boston has a health department. I can tell you all day long things we don't have that are basic. Should we have them? And then education, of course. Oh, my Lord. What would you spend the money on education-wise? Let me give you a better example. Would you let me? Sure. So we have minority health division within the health department, and it gets one-fourth of one percent of the budget. Can I say that again? One-fourth of one percent of the budget, and minorities are 24 percent of the population. Does that strike you as absurd? It barely has administrative staff. It has no money for programming, no money for research, no money for anything. So should we do that? Um, here's my favorite. I've been at it for 22 years. I had it on the House floor, and I missed by one vote, and I'll take it up again. Um, we have a nuclear reactor, which is absurd. It is 70 years old. It has never done anything. No research, no original Where research. Where is this? Oh, down at URI. Set, setting. I was unaware. 300 feet from the water, so if a, <laughs> a real hurricane came, I was very worried the last time. We're going to be in trouble. It will poison the water for 10,000 years. And I'm not exaggerating. I've talked to California folks who were in Newport, and they came over and looked at it for me. Um, I'd like to close it, $16, 17000000 million a year, and create an education fund for families under $25,000. So a little extra money to go to Catholic school, a little extra money to go to after-school programming, a little extra. Anything you want it for, come and get $1,000. Just the interest. Um, Brown University owns a large amount of real estate uh, on the east side. Um, 442 properties. Yes, more than a billion dollars of assessed value, mm -hmm. I believe. And, you know, obviously they don't pay property taxes. They do mm -hmm. have a, a voluntary agreement where they do make payments to the city. But do you think that Brown should be, <laughs> well, I think I can tell by your body language what well, your answer is going to be. The payments aren't. Do you think Brown should be pay paying more? 
uh, the, the payments are probably about 12% of what their taxes would be. Uh, no, a Supreme Court ruling, all nonprofits have to be taxed or none. And they got the little money out of them in lieu of taxes. Yeah, they probably have to voluntarily pay more, but do you think they should be contributing more? Wait, they absolutely should. Brown is dismal when it comes to being a good community partner. Dismal. Um, I have a bill already drafted. Uh, I would like to tax every single endowment of mm. four billion dollars or more. Okay? You can't tax the nonprofit. You can, I believe, tax endowments. The second biggest endowment is Rhode Island Foundation, 1.9 billion growing. When it gets to four billion, we'll tax them too. Um, I think I can get away with that, and that'd be a lot of tax money. Do you think the Fane Tower should be built? Yes. Okay. Uh, construction, construction, construction dollars, wow. Uh, secondly, jobs, 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 construction jobs. Wow, they're talking about 20 permanent employees. You know, what apartment house has that? And uh, hundreds of rich people. And nobody told them not to go downtown Providence and shop. Uh, and three-fourths of them, the study shows, will not be Rhode Islanders. So absolutely in favor of that. I'm a Jane Jacobs person. You have to have a mixed environment and I don't understand anybody you know the people in the jury district say there'll be a shadow over their house I doubt it and but everybody else opposed to it as tall as that building is there will be no shadow over College Hill or Fox Point let me ask you about another tall building what do you want to happen with the Superman building uh, whatever the governor says with this caveat let's write a little thing in there saying when this building is sold we get percentage, hopefully all our money back. So we give them 40 million. That building doesn't You're work. You're okay with the state subsidy, basically? Oh, I'm more than okay because the building doesn't work financially. Mm -hmm. They need some outside help. Um, if you're elected, will you push for the General Assembly to pass a pension obligation bond to help uh, shore up Providence's unfunded pension liability? Yes, but I'm slow about the yes. Uh, Providence got itself in trouble, and now we want to be bailed out. This is, you know, Central Falls' problem. And I think the state should have had rules. 21 states have rules that wouldn't have permitted that, that to happen. So it's partially the state's fault. Um, and we put it in place, and we see that this never happens again. So pass the bond, but then pass new rules. Tough, tough yeah. new rules. I just watched the teacher's contract, and they gave them half a percent, whole percent for three years, and, you know, that the contract wasn't signed. Yeah. And that's probably okay. Inflation was low, and they got slightly above, and I like teachers. And then they gave them three percent on top of that. That's wrong in a city that needs to be fixing the rust on the doors in the schools. You think the teachers should have, should have shouldn't have gotten a 3% raise. Wait, 3% on top of the three-year little increases that made some sense. Yeah, I need to go back and check, but yes, they got a, they did include an increase for each year of the contract, yes, and then, and then a plus, a half a, plus a half bonus. a percent at the end. Uh, that's political. Oh, I'm sorry, you're referring to the bonus. I'm, I'm on no, board got now. A, oh, they got no, a bonus no, on top of. They got 3% um, over the years, yes. which makes some sense. You know, my grocery bill went up, and so did theirs. The three other percent on top of all that we can't afford, and where does it come from? And the school system is declining. How do you get rewarded at a time like that? And by the way, I'm talking about everybody. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Should there be a, a pay freeze for city employees? I, I have a problem. I know how much it costs to live. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there are people like Providence police officers making a hundred plus thousand dollars with all their overtime. And the overtime's not stren strenuous. Go to the water fire <laughs> and watch them. Um, we've got to spend the money we have appropriately. And 10% of city employees get too much. Probably 60-70% are at the right level and 10-20% are, are below where they should be. Um, 
th this stuff's tough. Because remember where we came from. You know, all these yeah, city employees used to be underpaid and they had no protection. And now the union makes them strong as it should. But the politicians should be careful about giving away goodies so that they can get endorsed by these particular unions or these work groups. I, I, I love working people. And I don't want anybody. I think I was the first person in the world. Nah, that's exaggeration. <laughs> I was the first person in Rhode Island to propose $15 an hour 30 years ago when people were making $6. How do you live on that? You don't. Even then, you don't live on it. Should the Providence Police increase its budget and hire more police officers in response to the increase in violence this summer? No. This year? No. And why not? Um, the entire Providence Police structure needs to be examined and restructured. And when we do that, we're going to see some waste. We're going to see uh, even the scheduling is out of whack. If you change that scheduling one hour this way or that, we know when crime takes place. And crime takes a lot, half the crime takes place three to six. It doesn't take place after six, we're in the house, we're hiding. <laughs> it doesn't take place at two, we're at work hiding or in school. And you, so you know where the crime is. So all you have to do is put more officers on at that time, but you can't because they have their little schedule. And the schedule is based on seniority. And you, you don't want to work at those hours. The entire police structure needs to be examined. I'll give you a quick uh, example. So everybody's mad with the commissioner of public safety right now. Fire him, fire him. Uh, I would like to see three commissioners of public safety. I'd like to see a rule. Two people of one race, one of the other. Two of one gender, one of the other. Give them a 10, 12 year term, they get fired if they do something wrong, otherwise they get to stay, and you rotate them out you know, a year and a half apart so everybody doesn't leave on the same day. And they must live in the city of Providence. Would, you want, a, it, would you want a residency requirement for, beyond the commissioner? Yes. For who I else? Think all new, well, we had it for 48 years, and then we got rid of it, and uh, we pay police officer 100,000 bucks and they live in Lincoln. We don't have anybody to pressure. We don't have the right middle class to pr You didn't ask me this, but I want to share it. So all those high class workers would be pressuring for a better school. The Kennedy uh, uh, Elementary School used to be great until all those white, solid citizens left town and, and the school collapsed. On the east side, everybody's busy going to Moses Brown and whatever, and there's no one I, I'm exaggerating. You know, folks go to Vartan Gregorian. But I would like to have half the middle, upper class white folks in this city interested in the public schools. And you don't get that if they live in Lincoln. So that's my reason. Also, I'd like to see a police officer off duty in the grocery store. I really would. You will never see one again. I think that'll help with police community relations. Yes. And they live in the neighborhood. But I'm, I'm not joking. They get in their car. It is rumored, you're the, you're the investigative operation around here, you should look into it. It is rumored that 95% of all police officers live in suburbia, which is their right, legally. And um, it's gonna get higher because we're coming from when they had to live in the city and blah, blah, blah. Oh, they should live in the city. Um, I just want a yes or no on this one. Do you, do you support legalizing marijuana for recreational use? So oh, Patrick Kennedy is my friend. He doesn't support it. I do. Uh, people going to do it. You're fine with that. Um, and finally, you know, listen, you've got five Democrats in this primary. Um, you probably all agree on a lot of things. No, we don't. But uh, go on. <laughs> well, on some of the basics. So I want you to tell me what distinguishes you from the other Democrats in this race. Um, I went to the House of Reps to get a five-way stop light. I drove through it yesterday, and it just makes my soul feel good. Uh, kids used to get killed, Hope High School kids, on um, Lloyd, Hope, and Thayer where they come together because people would speed up because it's five way, whatever. I got that. I got a new glass roof for the RISD Museum. Mm. I, I, I could sit here all day telling you real things. We went to the Y the other day and gave them a huge check to put hundreds of kids in the swimming pool and I started crying. 
the, the, the director start crying, I start crying. <laughs> I'm a doer. And not a one of these people, and this is the first time I've ever, ever said this, but you're giving me my chance, not a one of them has done anything substantial for the people of the East Side and certainly not for the people of Providence. Not a one of them. Three or four of them want to, and one or two have done something. And I'd be careful because Sam um, uh, you know, was councilman and on the school board, so he's the exception to the rule. But uh, I wish people, and I'm not just talking about Ray Rickman, I wish people would elect doers. Don't elect people for their ethnicity, their race, how pretty they are. My mother used to say, you vote for the person who's going to improve the schools for your children. And that's me. That's the difference between me and them. I have a record, substantial. They are talking and again, I'm exempting Sam from this. <laughs> I'm sure. not telling anybody to vote for him, but uh, you know, I, I try not to lie. I hate politics because people lie, and I'm, so I'm not going to throw him in with them. Uh, but I've done more than any of them. Um, the other day, and, and this is far abroad, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stop with my answer. Um, I helped a woman doctor in Mali, AIDS clinic. She wrote me this postcard telling me she's retiring and thanking me for helping to save 35,000 women's lives. That's Ray Rickman. And did I do it to run for this Senate seat? Absolutely not. I never thought I'd be running for public office again. I'm needed, and I wish there was someone else. And what I'm going to do, you, you asked me a tough question, what I'm going to do in the next three years is find a replacement. I'm not running a third time. You, you know, swimming is my my p passion. Helping these children swim, we created an endowment of about two hundred thousand dollars. I got to turn it into a million dollar endowment. I have all these things to do, and the legislature is um, inter I interfering, <laughs> and I'm thrilled, you know, to let it interfere. But I'm not going up there for six, eight years. Ray Rickman, Democrat running for State Senate District 3, thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much.